time. Today, we are talking about what you can substitute for butter. <laughs> it's subclip time. Today, we are talking about what you can substitute for butter because I know a lot of people have dairy issues, so butter is an issue. So first thing I wanna show you is there is actually a vegan butter that can be used. Um, I'm not allowed to say their name, but I can do the name down below. Um, and it's uh, this particular one is soy-free, corn-free, dairy-free, all free of the stuff that I can't have. So, um, and it really works well in, I honestly, I use it to cook with everything. I baked with it, I cooked with it, I saute with it. It's really, really awesome. So that's that one. You can always use a vegan butter to replace. Another thing you can use as a one-to-one -one ratio to replace is actually avocado. Um, now you can use it in sweet and savory. You can bake with avocado. So this is a great one to substitute for butter if you don't want the butter. It's still high in fat, but it's really good fats. So, and it's dairy free, obviously. Um, another one you can use, this is usually more in baked products with um, when you want a sweet flavor, and that is applesauce. You can replace butter with applesauce. You can actually also replace eggs with applesauce. So applesauce is kind of a cool thing to use when you're baking. Um, there are a few other products you can use. One of them, pumpkin puree, that again would be more like a, a sweet item, but there's so many things that you can replace butter with, and so, I think it's pretty simple, you know? There it is, voila. Hello, it is the subclip for buttermilk replacing yogurt. I will say this, I, I can't really have a lot of yogurt. Um, one yogurt I can have is coconut milk yogurt. And I've had to get used to the taste because it's a lot of coconut. So if you would rather not use coconut in your baked goods, you can substitute one cup of buttermilk with one cup of yogurt. Now, as you all know, I can't have milk. So uh, to make buttermilk, I do milk of my choice, which in this case, cashew milk, and then a tablespoon of lemon juice. And that is how you make buttermilk. Spin it up and there you go. There's actually a sub clip showing you how to make buttermilk already existing on this channel. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Allergy Actress coming at you with a short clip. How to make your own buttermilk. Okay, so I have a, a tablespoon of lemon juice, freshly squeezed. So you just wanna put that lemon juice in the bottom of a cup measure. Just one tablespoon. And then you take whatever milk you want, so I'm using cashew milk, and you pour it until you get to the one cup line. Pour it on top of the lemon juice until you get to the one cup line. And then you stir let it sit for five minutes and voila you've got a cup of buttermilk what's up party people everyone you know how to make a nut milk uh, especially cashew milk well guess what you get to learn today all right so with the cashew milk here you got raw cashews one cup I soaked them overnight uh, you can do as little as four hours but no less than four hours and then I rinse them until the water ran clean and now I'm going to dump them into my blender so they go in the blender and that, again that's one cup of cashews and then we're going to do half, there's four cups of water in here. So I'm gonna do half of it, two cups. That's about right. And then we blend it. You start blending slow and then uh, you, you go until it's basically pulverized. And then you're going to add one to two tablespoons of maple syrup. You could also use honey or agave. And then you're gonna add uh, two teaspoons of vanilla if you want. Vanilla is optional. I like vanilla so I'm adding it. You're going to add a pinch of cinnamon or that's also optional and you can also add a pinch of salt. So then we pulverize so we're first going to pulse it. Oh already pulsing very nicely and then you liquefy. And there it goes. I wanted to go faster. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> that was a brush. Okay, and then uh, it looks very really lovely and liquidy. So then you add your, uh, well, I'm adding the maple syrup. You can add honey agave. I'm adding my vanilla. Wah! And then I'm adding a pinch of cinnamon. I'm going to add a little bit. Okay. And then a pinch of salt. Okay. Not too much salt. And then, again. Ah! Wait a minute. Oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> Okay, so then uh, you can add as much or as little water as you want. Mine looks pretty good. It's pretty liquefied, so uh, this is what you get. Now, if your blender is like mine and it's not hasn't completely blended the cashews, then what you do is you uh, get a fine mesh strainer and you strain the milk. You can also use a cheesecloth uh, or a nut bag. Nut bag. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm sorry, that was, that was so funny. Okay, and then you squish it through with a spoon. Uh, and that's, that makes the real pure, nice milk. So here, see, it's coming out. Wah! I'll move this so you can see it better, and we'll tilt it down. There you go. Okay, so see, now it makes this kind of almond, well, sorry, cashew paste, and then you've got your milk down below. So um, what I want to do is I'll probably put this back in the uh, blender, add some more water, make some more milk, okay? So that's how you make cashew milk, voila, it's tasty. Put it in a, a closed container in the fridge, it keeps up for a week, and it's really super tasty. That's it, and you can use it to substitute for anything that calls for milk. Awesome, bye! This is some clip time. We are talking about replacing rice today. A good way, and you can also replace potatoes actually with this, so a good way to replace rice is to use rice to cauliflower. And honestly, you can buy this from the store already riced, or an easy way to do it is throw a head of cauliflower, break, break it down to little florets, and then put it in your food processor, your blender, and bring it down to this size. It's so easy. You can saute these, you can roast these, and they stay in their form or you can puree them and it becomes much more like a mashed potato. It's super yummy and it's far healthier for you than um, rice or potatoes. There's no starch and it's got a lot of great nutrients in it. And it's a vegetable, so you begin your vegetables. Hey guys, Mary Beth Eversell here, the allergy actress, and I am bringing another sub clip to you today. This one is about another flour mix that you can use if you happen to be allergic to soy or have trouble with rice. All right, here we go. So this flour mix involves um, quite a few different mixes of flours. It is um, one and a quarter cups of millet flour, one cup of white sorghum flour, that's that right there. One cup of potato starch flour, not potato flour, potato starch flour. And then a three quarter cups of coconut flour. And then one and a half teaspoons of either xanthan gum or guar gum. And I'm using guar gum. That's it, you guys. Bake away. What's up guys? It is sub clip for coconut flour. Um, now I want to show you something. Coconut flour, if you can't find it in the store, it's so easy to make. Just get shredded coconut and grind it in a spice grinder till it looks like that. Uh, it's super easy. This one's a little bit, as you can tell, it's a little bit more fluffy and a little bit more refined. And then this one is more shredded, like shredded coconut. Um, the cool thing about coconut flour is it's used in quite a few recipes, but you can also you can substitute it for almond flour and grain, grain flours. Um, you just have to make sure that you make it less. So if you have a cup of almond flour, you're gonna wanna use like a quarter cup of coconut flour. And you're also gonna have to adjust your liquids and your eggs. Um, now I've done a recipe before where I just had to adjust the liquids and not the eggs. Just keep in mind that coconut flour is super absorbent, okay? So uh, keep, yeah, there you go, coconut flour, woohoo!
What's up, everybody? It is subclip time. Okay, so the elusive egg, how do you replace that? Um, in some baked goods, you can use applesauce, but in a lot of baked goods, you can use flax gel. So let me show you how to do the flax gel. You're basically gonna have a three to one ratio. So I've got three tablespoons of water, and then I have about two and a half teaspoons of already ground flax seed. If you don't have it already ground, if it's actual seeds, use one tablespoon of seeds, and then you're gonna have to grind them in like a spice grinder before you combine. So then what you do is you pour the water into the flax and you just whisk it until it becomes a gel. And it takes a second, but eventually you get a gel-like substance and you can use that as egg. And it's super, I mean, it, you use it, it's, it works for a lot of things. So, um, so yeah, keep whisking. It will become more gelatinous. Uh, and that's your sub clip for the day. <laughs>Hey guys, okay, so this is the sub clip for a substitution for olive oil. Now here's the deal, olive oil is so healthy and can be used for so much stuff, but sometimes you just wanna, you know, mix it up a little bit. So here is a wonderful oil that can do a one-to-one -one ratio replacement, and that is avocado oil. Now avocados, as we've talked about before, are high in vitamin K, vitamin B, vitamin C, and it also helps with your metabolism and it helps lower cholesterol, so it's a really excellent oil. It deals with high heat, up to 500 degrees, which is fantastic, and you can substitute this oil seriously for anything that you, you would use olive oil for, um, and uh, it has a little bit more of a distinct taste. It's a little bit more robust, I would say, but it's perfect for for changing it up a little bit so there you go avocado oil What's up guys, this is Subclip for substitute in baking for oil. Uh, so if you don't like coconut oil or you can't have it, and you also can't have vegetable oil because that often has corn in it, consider using grapeseed oil. It's a wonderful oil for baking. I use it all the time. It looks like this, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio for any of those oils that I just mentioned. You guys, this sub clip is really cool. So do you have a recipe that calls for whipping cream or heavy cream? Well, consider using coconut milk in place of it. Uh, even thicker is an actual is the actual coconut cream. Now that's the stuff that's like at the top. Like if you get a can of coconut, that's the stuff that's at the top that's all thick and gooey. Uh, and then you got the liquid at the bottom. So the coconut cream is at the top, the liquid's at the bottom. This is a combination of both. So you can use it one to one ratio in place of heavy cream. Hey guys, ready for your sub clip? Can't have pasta? Need more veggies? Well, I've got the answer for you. It's called a spiralizer. And look at this, today we're doing zucchini, zucchini pasta. And all you do is, here, I'll show you real quick. You cut the zucchini in, beep, beep. You don't even have to, uh, you don't even have to peel it. And then you go, boom, <laughs> just like that. And then you go like this, and you have to give a little bit of pressure so that it keeps moving forward. But look, look at these lovely noodles coming out. And these are fantastic. You can saute these. You can even bake them if you want to. Um, and you just basically how you would cook a normal zucchini. And it's in place of the pasta. You can put whatever pasta sauce you want on there, whatever other veggies you want. You could put meats and fish and shellfish. I can't put any of those, but you can. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like the best thing I think I've purchased in a long time. Um, and it doesn't just do zucchini, it can do all sorts of roots, veg root vegetables like uh, sweet potato, potatoes, it can do carrots, it can do zucchini, cucumber. Um, you could do like a whole rainbow medley of pasta if you wanted to. Anyway, that's my sub clip for the day, you guys. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Hi guys, this is the sub clip for tortillas. Okay, so we've got corn tortillas and we have wheat flour tortillas. And I can't have either one of those and I know a lot of you can't either. So I've got some great substitutions for those tortillas. You can find potato flour tortillas. They're very easy to find uh, at your local allergy-friendly grocery store. And they have potato flour, but they also have the yam sweet potato flour stuff and it's like ooh, i love being my favorite yes um and then 
The other one you can do, and they have several different uh, brands of this, is the brown rice tortillas. Now these are not as malleable. Like you, when you heat them up, they tend to break a little bit. Um, so if you're gonna do something that's like heat up and roll or whatever, like a burrito or something, I would highly recommend these because they're super malleable. Whereas the brown rice tortilla, not so much. These are better for like, if you wanna make chips um, or if you wanna do like a tostada, then something flat and that works. There you go. What is up party people? This is Mary Beth Ebersole, the allergy actress with your sub clip of the week. Can't do soy sauce? No problem. Try coconut aminos. I promise you guys, I have used this so many times when I have gone to like get vegetarian sushi or um, anytime, anything, any recipe that calls for soy sauce. I use this instead when I make my curry and it calls for fish sauce, I use this. It's so good. It's a little sweeter than soy sauce, but it's so tasty. It has the, just the right amount of saltiness in it. So coconut aminos, there you go. What's up my peeps? It's Mary Beth Eversole, the allergy actress coming to you with your sub clip of the week. Can't have xanthan gum? Well, there's the xanthan gum. Try guar gum instead. They are both used as emulsifiers in baking, and they are equal parts. So if you do one and a half teaspoons of xanthan gum, do one and a half teaspoons of guar gum. Guar gum is derived from beans. Xanthan gum is derived from corn. See you later. Okay guys, here we are with our sub clip for vinegar. All right, you guys, so there's so many types of vinegars and a lot of vinegars are made from grapes, but there are some that are made from other things. So we have to know what's in the vinegar because for people that are like, say, allergic to corn, like me, you need to know that white vinegar is often distilled from corn. So be careful if you're using white vinegar. If you're cooking for someone with a corn allergy, don't use white vinegar. <laughs> um, now this is different from white wine vinegar. White wine vinegar is made from grapes and that's safe. This, not safe. However, white vinegar is used in a lot of cleaning products and um, so again, if you're allergic to corn, if you can stand the cleaning product and you don't have a reaction, great. If it's just ingested, it works, you know. But again, check. Check the white vinegar. You might have to test it out because it is a really good cleaning product. So. Um, okay, so then the next thing is rice vinegar, go, used in a lot of Asian cooking, and um, it has a really distinct smell. It's like, it's super sweet, so, and obviously distilled from rice, so uh, very helpful. And then um, sherry vinegar, now this one is really particular, and we're going to be using this in one of our recipes, uh, the savory pumpkin pies. Oh, and it smells so good, you guys. So it comes from the Andalusian uh, region of Spain. And it's to be marketed as sherry vinegar, it has to come from that region. And it's a very tiny region. Um, and it's uh, Palomino grapes. And it has to be those grapes in order for it to be called sherry vinegar. So people actually travel. Like if you see a sherry vinegar that comes from California, if it's called sherry vinegar, they went to that area of Spain, they got a starter, and then they took it back to California, and then they created the vinegar from there. So um, it's kind of like when you do like sourdough bread, where you get the starter sourdough, and, and then voila. <laughs> so um, this is really good. It's, it's got a really unique flavor and, and, and smell, and I love it. It's, kind, it's also kind of sweet, but um, really good. So we also have one of my favorite vinegars. This is apple cider vinegar. It is distilled from apples. It is one of the best things that you can have for uh, health to just kind of cleanse your body. So I have an autoimmune disease and I do apple cider vinegar every day because it's helpful for that. Um, it really just has a lot of like detoxifying cleansing elements in it. Um, so you can cook with it. I bake with it a lot, uh, but you can also just drink it straight. So, doesn't taste that bad. <laughs> um, okay, and then one of my other favorites, balsamic vinegar, and I specifically love aged balsamic vinegar. This comes from grapes, um, and it's obviously aged a lot longer than some of the other vinegars. The darker your vinegar, the more aged it is. So, yay, I like that one. This is great in dressings. Okay, and also pretty much everything else. I put it on like my stir fries and stuff. Um, and then the last one, is uh, red wine vinegar. So you know I talked about we had right, white wine vinegar. This is red wine vinegar. Um, and it's very, it can be used across the board for vinegar, honestly. It's made from uh, red wine grapes. 
and that's all it is. It smells good. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty mellow for all of the vinegars. So that's vinegars, you guys. So take your pick. And then of course there's always the flavored ones too. So if you go to a specialty store, you can get like blackberry balsamic vinegar or things like that. And those are super yummy in dressings as well. So there's my vinegar sub clip. Enjoy. What's up my peeps? Are you ready for your sub clip? Today, we're talking about breadcrumbs. Um, super easy. Usually, you know, you can buy breadcrumbs if you're not gluten-free, you can buy them from the grocery store and it's like, voila, done. Um, but if you're gluten-free, it's hard. Now you can do panko, but if you're allergic to corn, you can't. So, what we do is we take a bread of our choice that's gluten-free and corn-free and soy-free, etc., and you put it in your food processor and you turn it into this. And look, it's like, it's like, you know, not super fine. Um, it's pretty nice sized breadcrumbs and then you can just toast them up in the oven, just like you would toast. And then voila, you have really lovely breadcrumbs. You can top it on like a casserole or anything like that, even a salad is really good. So yeah, ta-da.